Christopher and welcome back in Romania. How are you feeling? Uh, very well, thank you. Yeah. Um, I know you had some health problems regarding your neck, so how are you feeling right now? Uh, today's a good day. Um, some days are not so good, but all in all it's really, really much better than one year ago. So I'm grateful for that. I mean, one year ago I couldn't use my right arm to brush my teeth or, or eat, you know, so uh, it was a bit tricky to play guitar yeah. um, and a lot of pain. Uh, but today, well, you know, it's from day to day. Some days are not so good, some days are better. Like today, so far, I don't feel anything. That's good to know. <laughs> so currently you are touring over Europe along Imperial Age to promote the new album called uh, Beloved Antichrist. Uh, it started in February, actually. So how is the tour going so far? Uh, it's going really well. Um, it's a very long tour. We do, I think, 61 shows in Europe, all in all. And uh, the market for Therion to do a tour in Europe is around, I don't know, 35 shows or something. So we're doing a lot of small shows as well, you know, to fill it up. So we, we played Scotland and Northern Ireland and you know, places where we normally don't play. You know. We did eight shows in the UK. We never did that before. Uh, so, you know, we're, we're taking all sorts of shows. Basically, we took all, all shows we could get. So there's big ones, small ones, medium ones, it's everything. And uh, it's very diverse. I, I really like that. Uh, that you, it's not the same every day when you do this long tour. Mm -hmm. And response has been really good from the fans. We didn't have yeah. any bad tour, uh, any any bad show. And um, the support tags are great. The, the fans get a really good value for the tickets. I think. Yeah. Well, as mentioned earlier, Beloved Antichrist is your new album. So basically, the concept behind it, it's after the book, The Tale of Antichrist by the writer uh, Vladimir Solovyov. So why did you choose this book? Um, well, first of all, it's actually not an album. It's a, it's a musical. Um, and you can buy many musicals on CD, right? Yeah. You can buy Phantom of the Opera on CD, but it's not an album. Um, and I think that's very important because we had very good reviews, but the few reviews that were not good, um, they were all misunderstanding it and thought we made a three hour long album, which we didn't. Um, to fully understand what we want to, to do, you have to see the musical, I guess. Anyway, um, the concept goes back to 2003 when I wanted to make a classical opera and uh, I wanted to, to do it on some sort of classical literature because it's very hard to come up with a, with a new very good story for an opera and I wanted to do it on Bulgakov's Master and Margarita but I realized that this story is too complex for one opera it would have to be a series of four operas like Wagner's The Ring so uh, I thought that was a little bit over the top maybe to do for your first opera. So I thought let's choose something simpler. And I was very much into Russian literature at the time. So I thought maybe Solovyov, short tale of Antichrist, that should be good. Um, so that's how I, I started to work with it. But then I realized that the story was not very good for theater. So we changed a lot. We changed characters, we changed the beginning, we changed the end, and we changed a lot in the middle too. So. It would be more fair to say that it's partly based on it and overall inspired by it. There are a few, like three, four scenes that are pretty much exactly like it's in a book. And there are a few characters that are taken exactly how they are in the book. But if you, if you read the book and you go and see the musical, you won't recognize most of it. Did you use a, a classical orchestration for this one? I mean, instrumental I mean, or uh, in the studio? In, well, we have to record in the studio, of course. Ah, you mean if you use the real symphonic orchestra? Exactly. Uh, this time we, we used uh, um, the most advanced sample library you can buy for money. It's called uh, Vienna Instruments, and most Hollywood movies that you hear are used with it. Um, it's seldom they use real orchestra in Hollywood movies these days. So it's all made with Vienna instruments. It's a 14,000 euro sample library. And we used it on an earlier version of it, on um, Gothic Kabbalah. Normally we use real orchestra because 
you know, I'm old fashioned, I like the little mistakes yeah. and the random things that come. But we recorded three and a half hour of music. That's the same length of, it's equal of four albums. Um, and we didn't have the budget to do it. So if you're gonna record that much, I mean, we had 100,000 euro, that's it. So uh, it sounds like a lot of money, but uh, to record four albums with that money is not so much. So yeah, we recorded three and a half hour of music and then um, I decided to shorten it down to three hours or four minutes, uh, which could fit on three discs. So that's why yeah. we have that now. So we have 25 minutes of unreleased material actually. Anyway, everything sounds pretty nice, but I noticed something that there are a few solo. Did you feel that there isn't a need to be solos on this album? You mean guitar solos? Exactly. Guitar solos. Well, solo. normally you wouldn't have guitar solos because what are the actors going to do when there's a guitar solo? Yeah. Um, but there are um, a few. I mean, you, guitar is like any instrument in the ensemble. And it, if you can have a guitar solo, it has to be something very triumphant or something like that happened and quite melodic. So you have it in uh, New Temple of uh, the Temple of New Jerusalem, um, and it's very triumphant there. It like signalizes his triumph. And there's also one in in um, Burning the Palace, but Burning the Palace is it's more like a melody. It could have been done on um, oboe or it could have been done on strings could have played it just just a regular choice of instrument it's not really solo in that way so there's this only one guitar solo which is like regular really guitar solo um, and yeah it, it suits there yeah I have a question how did you make Chiara Malvestitis which currently she's the opera vocalist in the band um, I want uh, Melissa Fairlack. Uh, we've been speaking before. She sang in uh, Asma Diva, uh, the same band that Laurie Lewis was in. So actually, I tried to get a hold of Melissa from the beginning um, because they were our support act in the US and uh, I really liked her singing. But then she had left the band and I couldn't get hold of her. And then the main guy from Asma Diva said, Well, you know, we have a better singer now. You, you can borrow her if you like. So that's how we get uh, Lori into the band. Uh, and then when when Lori decided not to tour anymore, she's still a member of the band formally, but she she can only record, she cannot tour with us. Uh, when she couldn't do that, I, I tried to get hold of Melissa again, and this time I got hold of her. But she had just had a child and she wasn't able to go on tour. So she recommended me Kiara instead. And it's often like that, you know, by a recommendation that you find really good people. Yeah, she's good. She's she awful. fits very well. Well, what's unique about her is that she's a spinto soprano. She has a very strong upper register. Like if you have a coloratura, for instance, like Lori, they have a very high register. But it's not made to make very powerful notes up there. You just make some small trips up there. Um, like in the Queen of the Night, you know. But we have some pretty high notes which are, you know, sung out very loud up there, like in Yin and Gap, which is a high C sharp. C sharp is not so high for, a, for an easy note, but to sing it out loud, you know, long notes like that, in the forte, uh, is um, not everybody that can go on the stage and do day after day on a tour. And uh, Chiara is very unique in that way, she has very strong upper register. So she's the perfect live singer for us. Yeah. Uh, do you have in mind maybe to release a DVD? Well, first we need to find a production company who wants to stage the opera. Um, we will see, you know, there are different um, production companies that I have recommended that maybe would be good to stage the rock opera. And, um, once we figure that out, so we know we have a, a, a musical production, then we will worry about the DVD. Yeah. Or actually, you're a bit old-fashioned like me, so you say DVD. I think most people don't use Blu-ray today. <laughs> but, you know, I don't have a Blu-ray player either. Yeah. 
it was already announced your South American tour. Uh, do you have other touring plans, maybe North America or summer festivals? We play North America. We do Mexico, we do El Salvador, we do uh, Guatemala, and we do Costa Rica. They're all um, North America. Yeah. <laughs> but we want to USA. It's a yeah. horrible country for our type of music. It it's works with extreme music, with death metal bands, but for symphonic metal bands, it's horrible. Why uh, do you say so? Well, there's no market. Uh, it's a big country and you have a number of people who like it, but they're all spread out. So I think we can do one, two, three, I maybe mean, we can do maybe three concerts in the US where we can have 500 people. Um, the rest will be between 50 and 200. Yeah. Well, Therion, I to say so, has a history behind uh, a lot of albums, great albums, I can say. Uh, a lot of people that have been involved in the album, singers, musicians. Uh, so, how do you describe the Therion activity? I don't know, just a bunch of people who make music. <laughs> yeah. What can you tell me about your other band, Luciferian Light Orchestra? Well, I was always a 70s guy and I always wrote a lot of 70s type of music. In most cases, I kind of hid it into Ethereum music. I, I rearranged it in a way that people don't understand, it's 70s. I fool them to believe that it's modern music, but in reality it's really old. And I always did that. I mean, even Montelli, like Cults of the Shadow, was a mixture between ACDC and Deep Purple that I've rearranged in a way that it sounds modern. And sometimes they were a bit more straightforward, like uh, Dreams of Swedenborg on the um, Lemuria album, where you can really hear the 70s sound. But I was just playing along a little bit. And when we made Citrara, the idea was to make it very retro sounding, very vintage sounding. But I guess we were a bit, a bit of a bunch of cowards when it came to it in the studio. We tried to compromise, and in the end, it sounded more like an early 80s production rather than a 70s production. And then I felt like if I don't dare to go all the way with Therion there, maybe I should record the songs totally 70s instead. Um, we actually have some unreleased stuff from Citrara where we recorded with a 70s vintage drum kit and really made it more 70s. But I felt Normally I always did what I wanted with Therion, but when it comes to the sound production I was a bit chickened out a little bit there. So then it's better to do Luciferian Light Orchestra where I can fulfill my 70s visions all the way and Therion remain Therion. Yeah. So will you release a new album very soon? Very soon, no. Uh, I will be busy for the rest of the year with uh, first these tours and then do the, uh, try to stage the rock opera in the, the musical form of it. But um, maybe next year I'll have time, let's see. The thing with the rock opera is that it doesn't have to be me playing in it, or it doesn't, it doesn't have to be Therion performing it. If you see Jesus Christ Superstar, it doesn't matter that Ian Gillan sang on the CD, or the vinyl back then, but if you buy the CD with Jesus Christ Superstar, it will be Ian Gillan from Deep Purple singing uh, Jesus. But he... I think he never even performed that live with them. So it, it doesn't really matter who's performing it, as long as it sounds good. Exactly. So I'm going to try to franchise it and sell it to a production company. And maybe, we'll see, we have some ideas with one production company that may be interested in putting in Ethereum people there, but then it will be everybody except me. I will take another guitar player because I want to co-direct it. And if I'm going to sit in the orchestral pit and play a lot of chords for three hours, then I cannot direct it. I need to see it from the front, have the overview and everything. Also, with, with my neck problem, I'm not sure if I can actually play three hours a night. I mean, for one night, two nights, but if it's going to be a long tour, I wouldn't want to risk that. Then I'd rather take in somebody else and I, have a, I can have a director which is main responsible who knows how to put up a musical and I can co-direct it and just make sure he doesn't have any funny ideas you know. 
so I will be happy in the end. And I will for sure enjoy it more sitting in the middle on the first row with a glass of red wine and enjoy my creation rather than sitting in the orchestral pit and play chords for three hours. Can't wait to see you tonight. It's my first time seeing Therion <laughs> before I couldn't attend your shows when you came here. I'm also tonight with my father, which uh, he will see you for the third time. <laughs> so thanks for the interview. She's from Skalmagram Media. Well, thank you for having me. Stop!